to the Lord who will prosper our work and he bless you. Surely God's merciful goodness utterly attends you. Ponder anew what the Good morning, everybody. As you can see, Calvin's not here. He's uh, in Prince Edward Island, so I'm afraid you get the B team again today. But uh, let's join in the call to worship. Here at the Feast of God's Holy Word and Holy Meal. Eyes and ears are opened so that we may all be here on Let us pray. God of love, you show your people how to be truly rich in faith through the gifts that you give when least hoped for or expected. Come to your people today with words of both judgment and mercy that we may be fed from the bread of life. We pray this in your holy triune name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all, Amen. And we'll follow with Aaron leading us in our next hymn.
Please be seated. And we'll do the prayer of confession responsively. Almighty and compassionate God, every day in our desire to attain our wants, avoid discomfort, and shun those we do not know or love, we show ourselves to be unworthy of your gifts of life. Just as Jesus made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, our merciful God lifts our burdens from us, removes the failures of our past, and turns us to new life. You are forgiven. Walk in peace. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Nelson Mandela said, When I am at peace with the world, I am at peace with myself. Let us share that peace of Christ with the world and one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. I'm Jeff, one of the elders here, and welcome to a new season after our slack and idle days of summer. Uh, thanks to everybody for who was able to attend, and welcome to the people who are attending online as well. So this morning, I want to make sure that we acknowledge that uh, both uh, Aaron and Nico have been helping us for the last few weeks, and we really appreciate that. Uh, window film. There's a sample up in the window uh, that you can look at, see how little it actually reduces the view outside, but it will also at the same time prevent a lot of heat from coming into the building. Uh, for choir, the potluck is this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. And if you are interested in being in the choir this year, please talk to Paul. He'll be back next week. Uh, first uh, PCW uh, soup luncheons of the season will be in September and then October and a coffee party in November. Uh, we've had a personal note from uh, Reverend Mike Venema of uh, the Reach Ministries. He's, he's thanking us for the help that we've given both administratively and in mental support, I guess you could say, in prayer and such and they've been having uh, good results. Details are in the bulletin if you're interested. And I think that's all it. I'm sorry, I forgot to welcome with the announcements would be there, I ignored them, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jeff. 
Okay, at this time, oh, look, I don't even have to announce it. You're coming up for a story. Excellent. Okay. Have a seat. I know what this is called. What, what is it called? Jesus chooses some helpers. That's what it's called. Jesus chooses some helpers. I so read it on the screen. Oh, you read it on the screen. So big week. How many of you started school this week? Yeah, did you start grade school? What grade? Yeah. Grade five. And what about you? Grade four. Grade four. And you? Mm -hmm. And you what? What grade? Two. Grade two. Well, we're going to be talking later on about a word called discipleship. And it's a word that comes from another language that the early Bible was written in called Greek. And a dis and disciple is somebody who learns from a teacher. Yeah, and so the teacher was who, do you think? Jesus, that's right. So here's Jesus. We're going to read this little story about Jesus pick, picking some of the people that I were going to be. Do you? Oh, so here it is. Everywhere Jesus went, people followed him. Why? Maybe it was his words, the stories he told, the way he talked about God using things they knew, seeds, earth, fields, sheep, yeast, bread, coin, houses, lamps, birds, wildflowers, or maybe it was his actions, healing the sick, playing with children, welcoming the lonely. Some who followed were simply curious. Others had deep needs they hoped Jesus could fill. Most people listened for a while and then went back to everyday life. Change for the better. But there were a few who gave up everything, work, home, family, to follow Jesus. Peter, Andrew, James, and John were the first. One day as he was teaching by the sea, Jesus saw some fishermen mending their nets. Night after night, they went out in the dark waters, hoping to catch enough fish to feed their families and pay their taxes to Rome. It was an endless struggle. You can ask your mom and dad about paying, paying taxes someday. It's hard. Come with me, called Jesus, and you can spend your lives fishing for people instead. Who knows why people make choices they do? Sometimes the door opens and it just feels right to go through it. Without a word, Peter and Andrew got up, dropped their nets on the ground, and began to walk with Jesus. James and John joined them. Their father, Zebedee, sat bewildered with the half-mended nets dangling from his hands. Wait, he cried. Where are you going? What about me? What about your family? But they were already far down the beach, leaving behind a trail of footprints in the sand. Another time by the sea, Jesus saw a man called Levi sitting in a booth where he was collecting taxes. Much of the money went to Rome, but any extra he kept for himself, so people said. Follow me, Jesus said. Levi stood up so fast he knocked his chair over. Leaving his tax booth behind, he followed Jesus. Others complained that Jesus had no business spending time with a tax collector, a greedy trader. But Jesus replied, when people look at my followers, they must see that there is no one outside the circle of God's love. Jesus also called Judas Iscariot, a passionate young man, full of energy. Some say he was one of the Sicarii, the dagger carriers who thought the way to freedom from Rome was through violence and terror. Why did Jesus choose him? Why did he follow Jesus? What did Judas expect from Jesus? There were women who followed Jesus too. Mary of Magdala, Joanna, Susanna, and many others. Jesus called them all his family. As in any family, they did not always get along. Sometimes it was hard for them to love each other, let alone everyone else who wanted to be close to Jesus. Sometimes their hearts felt so stretched they ached but they kept following Jesus along the way, doing their best to keep up. So let's have a little prayer. Jesus, every day and every week, we are students who learn to be your disciples. Help us on our way and show us what is right. We ask this in your name. And we say together, Amen. One more, Amen. Amen. 
Okay, and there is Sunday school today, so there you go. I'll say the prayer of illumination now as Janice gets ready to read or read from the, the word. Holy God, whose spirit comes to us in moments of both strength and weakness, come now into our midst that we might be able to hear your word in fullness and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our responsive reading is from Psalm 32. Um, if you're comfortable to do so, I invite you to stand, but if you're more comfortable to sit, please feel free to remain sitting. <clears throat> Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Our first reading is from Mark, chapter 12, verses 13 to 17. Then they sent to him some Pharisees and some Herodians, to trap him in what he said. And they came to him and said to him, 
Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, but you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a Daenerys and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose titled? title? They answered, the emperor's. Jesus said to them, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. Our next reading is from Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 to 19. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. So traditionally, this first week of September is the return to school for students, and it made me think about discipleship and learning and what that word meant, that it is somebody who follows a teacher and learns from them. And of course, then that made me think about the apostles. And I started thinking about them and doing some reading. And I was surprised at how very little we actually know about the apostles. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. And I think it's important when we look at some of these things that we kind of put them into the historical context of what was happening in Jesus' time. So Jesus and his contemporaries were the second generation of people to grow up, grow up under Roman occupation. Uh, Judea had been conquered in 66 BC, we would say, and it was a semi-autonomous kingdom under Herod, uh, either known as Herod the Great or Herod the builder, um, but still under Rome. And later, uh, when Jesus was a child, there was a second Herod, Herod Antipas. Uh, but Rome had taken over more control. Judea was now a province. And Judaism itself, the Jewish people, starting with the Babylonian exile, had become dispersed. And they were no longer just a cohesive unit of people praying and worshiping exactly the same way. And we see that time again in the New Testament. Uh, we heard it this morning. Jesus is approached by a group, the Pharisees and the Herodians. Sometimes we hear Pharisees and Sadducees. And these were different sects uh, within Judaism. You had um, the uh, Pharisees who were very strict interpreters of the law of Moses. The Sadducees were more of a um, inherited class of people with means and money, but still also strict followers of the laws of Moses. But they are the ones who are referred to as the Herodians because they were kind of more working with the Roman occupation and they occupied um, positions of authority and power. And then you had, you know, a, a, a obscure groups like the Essenes. Um, this is just to give you background of how diverse things were in Judea at that time. And people were hungering for a change. You know, they didn't like living under the occupation of the Romans, as nobody does. I mean, you know, we look back in the 20th century and we see what disasters happen with occupying powers. And so, there were groups of people desperately looking for and waiting for the Messiah. And of course, the followers of John the Baptist were one of those such groups. And he had disciples. You know, we think of the disciples sometimes interchangeably with the apostles. And yeah, 
um, all the apostles were disciples, but not all the disciples became apostles. And we'll come back to that word in a minute. Um, but they were seeking for a leader. They had preconceived ideas of what that leader was going to be. And of course, we know Jesus was nothing like what that preconceived notion was. And we don't even know how many disciples Jesus had. Some of the ones that um, we are going to talk about in a minute had actually been disciples of John the Baptist before they were disciples of Jesus. And the disciples probably numbered in the hundreds. We don't exactly know. Um, and as we heard from the story this morning, uh, it included both men and women as disciples. Um, the apostles were a separate group of people that Jesus chose. And that word, again, comes from the Greek. And it means to be sent forth. They were the ones that Jesus chose to send out to spread the word. So we're going to go back to Sunday school. It might be hard for some of us. The 12 apostles. I was pretty confused when I started thinking about the 12 apostles. It's easy to remember the first four of those fishermen that we heard about this morning. But what about the other eight? How many names can we come up with? So let's start with the ones we heard this morning because they were easy. Sorry? Thomas, that's a good one because he wasn't mentioned this morning. So Thomas, who else have we got? We've got to get 11 more here. So <laughs> Philip, thank you. Matthew, sometimes also known as Levi. That's what is difficult. Yeah, John, Peter. Peter, also known sometimes as Simon. And this is why it's difficult. Half of them had at least two different names. Uh, so let's start at the beginning. So there was Peter, also known as Simon, his brother Andrew, James and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, sometimes known as Levi, and he was the tax collector. We have another James. We have Jude, known some, to not be confused with Judas Iscariot. He sometimes goes by Thaddeus. And then we have John, Simon the Zealot, and last and always least, Judas Iscariot. Uh, so there they are. Those were the 12 uh, apostles. Those were the ones that Jesus commissioned in the great, or 11 of them. Judas was no longer part of the gang at that point um, in the Great Commission. And amazingly, those are the 12 most important people that Jesus chose to, sh to share that message. And of some of them, all we know is their name. That's all we know about them. In the Gospels, they are mentioned by name, and that's it. So what can we glean from some of the information? Peter. Peter, we know, was married because at some point Jesus reached out to heal his mother of a fever. We know that they were brothers. Peter and Andrew were brothers. James and John were brothers. Um, and then we have Matthew. And he's really juxtaposed with Simon the Zealot. And I chose that little reading this morning about the coin because it's important to remember what the political life was. So here is Matthew. He is a tax collector. He's working directly for the Roman government, collecting tax money. And there were other groups that despised him for that. It wasn't just so much that it was taxes, but no matter what these Jewish factions were, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Hellenistic Jews, they all had one thing in common. They all supported temple. And what that meant was the temple in Jerusalem. This is the second temple that was rebuilt after the Babylonian destroyed the first one. So it's the second temple. It was expanded by Herod, but they all supported it. It was a foundation of their faith. They supported it financially. Um, you know, that's where they, they, they went there to participate in um, religious events. And they all supported it. And for somebody like Simon the Zealot, it's a little obscure as to how, why he was so zealous. Was he religiously zealous, or was he actually part of a group who 
were seen as freedom fighters trying to get rid of Rome. We're not exactly sure, but the fact is he was totally against Rome, and that meant giving Rome any money whatsoever, even in the form of taxes, because it meant to them, these very religious people, that they were supporting a pagan government and a pagan people, and it went against everything that they believed in. So when they came to Jesus, this is interesting because there's a group of Pharisees, and in this version it's the um, Herodians. They're not two groups that get together, but they both saw Jesus as a threat, and they came with that coin to set him up because if he said, pay the coins to Rome, pay your taxes, they would have shopped them to the zealots saying, this guy's a, a, a collaborator. And if he'd said the other, you know, don't pay, they would have informed the Roman government, hey, this guy's a traitor, throw him in jail. They were, and they had come with a preconceived idea of what he was going to say. And of course, he confounded them. And he didn't say what they were going to say. Um, but when you think about how uh, strong people's beliefs were, they were, you, so, but he picked Matthew, a collaborator, and his complete opposite. Simon the Zealot, but he did pick them to be together. Um, we know that four of them were fishermen. We don't really know what the others did. We don't know whether they had families or even if they had children. And that kind of brings us to the Great Commission. Judas is dead. There are 11 remaining. Jesus comes back after his resurrection, and he talks to them. And I think one of the most important lines that we don't think about, it struck me, is there is Jesus, he's come back, he's resurrected, and there's a line, and still some doubted. We don't know what they doubted, but being human beings, I think they doubted themselves. It wasn't Jesus they doubted, but they doubted their ability to carry out what he was going to ask them to do, which was to go out and make disciples. And so, in a way, like we are all disciples. We may not be ever apostles and sent forth, but as we have Jesus as our teacher, we are all disciples. And I think that if we look at that little bit of information that we know about the apostles, it gives us strength. They were just human beings. He didn't pick special people. He didn't pick people in authority. He didn't pick people that led armies. He picked people that came from family, they had siblings, they worked together, they worked in boats. Um, he picked people that had different political views. And they were just like us. You know, these, the, the apostles argued with each other, they were jealous of each other, and they had doubts. The, I think the most important thing that we can take away from the disciples is the leaven stuck together you know, even after Jesus had been hung on the cross and killed, but they stuck together and they waited. And then after the Great Commission, they did go out and they shared that message. And I think that's the most important thing that we can take away from our knowledge of what little it is of, that we have about the apostles. Our prayers for the people. Confident that God hears us and knows our needs, let us pray for all creation, saying, Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Gracious healer, you visit us when we are in pain and worry. You spread your hands on our wounds. You speak to our demons. You bring peace and credence. Visit your churches and synagogues, mosques and ashrams, monastic cells, and places of prayer in every land for the well-being of all people of the earth and faith. Make us one. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Creator of beauty and surprising complexity, we long for the wisdom we need in order to cherish this earth. Give us the vision to see what you have made, vast expanses of prairie, forest dark and thick, 
oceans full of wondrous creatures and the heavens bigger than our imaginations. Show us how to keep your gifts as good stewards. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Liberator of the captive, you know the failings of all nations. When we turn our friends and neighbors into enemies, free our lands from despotic rulers and tricksters, people who lie for personal gain and those who wield hate speech. Give courage and perseverance to those who are weary of the struggle for justice so that new life and strength will infuse their tired bones. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Savior, we see the desperation of our sisters and brothers as well as ourselves. And knowing your love for what you have made, we beg your promise to be fulfilled. Waters in the desert, healing even in time of death, protection from whatever is frightening, salvation for those who are without help. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Holy God, we pray for those who grow our food and keep our waters clean, for politicians who make good laws and judges who rule with compassion, for children, for elders, for parents and grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends, and strangers. Give your world the means to live in harmony. We pray especially for Fosio and her family as they continue to navigate the refugee system. And we pray that they soon begin their next chapter as they join us in Nova Scotia. We pray for those who we now name aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. For those who have helped us know you, we give you thanks. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Into your hands we place the welfare of all creation in the name of one whose life, death, resurrection, and ascension is our own life, Christ Jesus. Amen. We who have received so many gifts now have an opportunity to share our gifts. For the healing of this world, let us now bring forth our tithes and offerings. Receive our thanks, O God, for your gifts of life, means, and time. 
We treasure your offerings, and small as our return giving may be, welcome it for the sake of those in need and for the furtherance of your witness in this world. Make us daily more grateful for all we have been given. In Jesus' name, amen. the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Be strong and do not fear. Trust in the Lord's blessing of answered prayer and healing. Listen to the wisdom around you. Speak well of your neighbors. Teach peace. May the God who made you, loved you, and lives with you bring you to a faith that cannot be weighted down and a courage that knows no bounds.